Every game in the legendary 25-year-old Civilization 4X strategy series puts a new spin on the enormous concept of taking a nation from a single nomadic tribe to a world-dominating superpower, one turn at a time. In that way, Civilization VI looks familiar, but it's loaded with some very smart and bold improvements that give it new levels of depth. Once I get absorbed into a campaign, it becomes so engrossing it's difficult to think about anything else. Under its colorful, cartography-inspired art style and varied music that swells to accent what you're doing, Civilization VI is crammed with an almost overwhelming number of systems. Trade, religion, espionage, great people, and more are all present, and each plays a big part in every game. This feels like a Civ game that's already had two expansions. A lot of depth emerges from the new city building system. Because we're playing on randomized maps every time, effectively laying out your city's buildings and wonders across multiple tiles to take advantage of adjacency bonuses and terrain types is a challenging puzzle that's all about figuring out how to specialize each city. There are loads of trade-offs to consider, like would you be better off building a district or a wonder, or working that tile for food and production resources. Those are decisions that always feel like they matter. Civilization VI also cleverly minimizes unit clutter by making builder units expire after use, and letting you combine up to three identical military units into a more powerful one. That makes it easier to manage a large army, and keeps turn calculation times down. Each of the 20 leaders have agendas that guide their AI behavior, which gives diplomacy some much-needed transparency. Once you've established a relationship, you can see why they're happy or angry with you, and what steps you might be able to take to change that. Egypt's Cleopatra, for example, likes other civilizations who have strong armies, and Queen Victoria likes nations that started on the same continent as England. They also have a randomized second agenda, so they're unpredictable in every new game. Civilization VI's biggest weakness is that the AI will sometimes start unprovoked wars, but it isn't very good at fighting them. Even on high difficulty levels, it fights by overwhelming you with numbers and advanced units, so the challenge is making use of tactics and support units to outmaneuver them. Winning isn't a cakewalk, but because of the AI's uncoordinated assaults, you're unlikely to lose cities unless you're badly outgunned. Back in the plus column, we have the extremely customizable government system that lets you assign bonus-giving policies to suit however you want to play. Thanks to a second parallel tech tree called the Civics Tree, you're always unlocking new policies to choose from in four categories. Both tech trees are helped along by research bonuses you get just by building, improving, or fighting, which lets the map layout and the course of your civilization's events influence you to go down research paths you normally might not. And it's all narrated by the distinctive accent of Sean Bean. Having seen a non-market economy, I suddenly understood much better what I liked about a market economy. There are literally more systems simultaneously at work here than I know what to do with. Ranging from the late game archeology span hunt that builds toward a cultural victory, to the race to unlock unique great people with powerful one-time bonuses, to the lackluster religious combat that only has three units and never really changes throughout history. But I've found I don't have to master everything in order to succeed, and I'm learning more and more with every game. All of that translates smoothly to both online and hot seat multiplayer, though I find the simultaneous turn-based online mode a bit messy, because who attacks and who defends is determined by whoever moves that unit first in real time. I also had my only crash in all of Civ 6 during a multiplayer game. Civilization VI will go down in history as the most fully featured launch version in the series. Many of those features are smartly revamped versions of Civ classics, but it finds its own identity with great new ideas like spread out cities, customizable governments, research boosts, and leader agendas. And even though the AI has some improving to do, it can put up enough of a fight to make world domination a challenge. For more on all things Civilization, stick with IGN.